Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the 10th of 15 videos in the Mobile Weather App Series. A link to the app's website is in the description below, as well as links to the other 14 videos in this series. In this video, we'll allow our users to select either Imperial or Metric as their system of measurement, and we're going to save the selection as well as the location to user defaults with app storage. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notification when new videos in the series and others are released. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. And if you feel inclined to support my work, you can always buy me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the description below. No pressure though. Well, now it's time to fix those Kelvin degrees that we're seeing. For this, I'm going to use a segmented control. And in SwiftUI, that's a picker of the segmented control style. We'll need a binding to a variable that will watch for changes and therefore update the UI. Since we are now using a view model, we can create that as a property of our list view model. So we'll start with var system equals zero. Back in content view, then I can create a picker that is bound to this property. So let's put it before the search field. I'll use the library to find this as I often forget the exact syntax and I find that grabbing it here from the library makes it easier to create a simple picker and replace it with my own content. So we'll start with the picker where the selection is the forecast list view model with a dollar sign in front dot system. That creates our binding. And for the label, though it's going to be hidden, it's useful to keep it here for screen readers. So I'll just say system. The picker's text views will be degree, that's option, shift, eight, C, and degree, F, for Celsius and Fahrenheit, with tags of zero and one accordingly. And we need to set the picker style to segmented picker style. We can set a frame and give it a width of 100 to reduce the width. And we can add some vertical padding as well. The rest of our work is done in the view models. So back in the forecast view model, let's create a new property that we'll call system that's an int. And now we can create a function that will do that conversion for us. So let's call that function convert. And it will accept the temperature, which is a double in Kelvin, and do the conversion and return another double. Well, Kelvin to Celsius is easy. All we have to do is subtract 273.5. And then if system is equal to zero, which was our Celsius, we'll return Celsius. Else, we'll need to convert that Celsius to Fahrenheit. And the formula is Celsius times nine divided by five plus 32. So now we can alter our high and low computed properties by passing our max and min values through that function. Back in forecast list view, the mapping is telling us that I'm missing the system argument, so let's just pass it along. And because I'm in a closure, we'll need to include self to access our parent system property. Let's try this out. I see that when I do my first search, I'm getting my temperature in Celsius now because that was the default. However, when I switch to Fahrenheit, nothing changes. Well, why? Well, returning to our forecast list view model, I see why. Updating the system type does not update our view model. We need to trigger some action when this value is set. So for this, I can use did set. If you've never used did set, I cover it and other property observers in this video here. I'll leave a link in the notes below. So we can add a did set method to our system variable. And within that, we could, if we wanted to, just call our get weather forecast function again. And that would refresh our array of forecast list view models, therefore updating our view. However, this is an unnecessary call to the network. The temperatures haven't changed. 
only the model that we are using to represent them because the high and low temperatures are based on the value of this system property. So all we have to do is loop through each of the values of the forecast array from zero up to the total count and then use the index to update the system property with the new value. So testing this now, I see I can switch between systems. Nice. What if I wanted to store this value and always remember it when we launch the app? Well, right now, it always defaults to Celsius. Well, this is a good case for user defaults and the app storage property wrapper. And I cover app storage and other property wrappers in this video. I'll leave a link in the description below. This is so easy, it's almost embarrassing. First, we'll need to import Swift UI. And then we can decorate our property with the app storage property wrapper and we'll need to provide a key for the user defaults so I can use the string system as the key as well as for the variable name. Back in content view, let's test this out. Let's find the temperature in Lahaina and for my American friends, I'll check out the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Stop the preview and start again. Notice how the segment didn't revert to degrees Celsius. It retrieved it from user default and stuck at Fahrenheit. That was so easy. Well, what if we wanted to remember the location too? We can do this as we did before and decorate this one with app storage property wrapper and give it a key string. And I'll use location this time. Let's try this again. I'm going to enter Lahaina once more. Great, I see the forecast. When I stop the preview and start again, the city is shown, but the forecast isn't displayed. I'm forced to tap the search button. Well, we can solve this by adding an initializer to our forecast list view model. And again, if you're not clear on initializers, I cover them in detail in these two videos, and I'll leave links in the notes below. An initializer is called whenever an instance is created. And in our case, it's created when our content view is initialized. So back in our view model file, we can create an initializer that checks to see if the location is not empty, which would be the case when the app is first installed. But if it finds a location value that is stored in user defaults, we can immediately get the locations. If we resume our canvas now, we see that the chosen system and city name are loaded and the forecast is displayed immediately. Starting and stopping the preview has the same effect. 